Gude. So quite a while ago I made a video about putting my Nixie tube clock I bought from the past indicator into this wooden box. And one of the questions came up was um, how to actually set the alarm. <laughs> and so I remembered I actually wanted to make a video about all the features, so the software features of this clock, because it has quite more features than you would expect from a normal clock. If you want to see how I put it into this box, there's a link in the description below. So I bet this will be a longer video. So I will provide links to jump to the exact um, functionalities I'll explain. So you don't have to watch the whole video. But let's get started. Basically, if you have a look inside, the, um, the tubes are mounted on a board. This is this board from another clock I bought. So the clock has two buttons to interact with, the left one and the right one. And each button has two different types of interactions. The click will change the current value. If you hold the button for two seconds, we will jump to the next functionality. It will be the next menu or it will be the next parameter to be set like hours and minutes and so on. If we are in a menu and we won't give any input for about 15 seconds and we'll jump back to the main menu which is basically just showing the time and date. These Nixie clocks offer more settings than most clocks I own like this slow watch and the functionalities are set the brightness, set time and date, set sleep and wake up time, set a leap seconds for corrections, set time and date format and set alarms. You see, I say alarms because there are up to two alarms you can set with these clocks. To show you better, we will just switch it around. Let's see all the perfect wiring going on. Like this. Ta da! And I also switch the buttons around so. It's actually now the left button is the left button and the right button is wired to the right button. So no worries about these. When you switch it on, it will display the time and the last seconds of the minute it will display the date. And here we go. Perfect. And then it switches back to the beginning of the next minute. So this is what I refer to as the basic menu. In this menu you can set the brightness of the tubes, you can jump into the alarm mode or you can enter the other menus for changing date and time and stuff like that. The brightness of the tube can be set in four steps by clicking the left button. It will dim down and then jump back to the brightest setting. Some of these clocks also differ a cool other feature which is um, the LED backlighting. You can access these by holding the L button and you can still change the brightness and you can switch it off by holding the L button again. That's what the left button does. When you click the right button, you will jump automatically into the first alarm mode and you will jump back after 15 seconds. Holding the R button will jump into the first menu of setting the time. So that's everything you can do in this menu. How to set time and date. To access the time and date menu, we hold the right button for two seconds. The flashing digits are the ones that can be altered. In this case, it is the seconds and we can just reset the seconds to zero whenever we want to do. So when we want to go to the minutes, we will just hold it for two seconds and we jump automatically to the minutes. Now we can decrease the minutes and we can increase the minutes with the right button. Once we have done this, we just hold one of the buttons and we jump to the hours. Same thing here, right increases, left decreases the number of hours. As you see, it's displayed in the 24 hour format and cycles through. Note there's no way to jump back. So once I'm in the minute mode, I can't jump back to the second mode. I can just continue on to the hours. So once we have set the hours, we just hold it for two seconds and we jump to the date. At first we have the year, which is 2017. Hold the some button two seconds, we go to the month cycle through to 12 and this is the second month today and the 19th day just set the 19th day once we are done with it we just leave it there for 15 seconds and it will return automatically to the main menu the day can be set to zero 
but there is actually no zero day in the calendar. This is a nice feature. The clock automatically displays the date at the last seconds of the minute, as shown before. But if you don't want to have this, if you just want to see the minutes, uh, the, if you just want to see the time without being interrupted by the day, you just set it to zero and then it won't show you the current date. But why won't you do this? This will just prevent the switch from the display of the time to the display of the date. But it won't switch off the anti-cathode poisoning stuff. That will happen every several seconds and cycle through all the numbers. Okay, that's this. So, set sleep and wake up times. This is a very nice feature. And you can disable the tubes when you are asleep. So when you are yourself asleep and won't ever look at the clock. So according to the manual, somewhere here, this feature helps to extend the lifetime of the tubes to up to 20 to 30 years. But they don't tell you how to set the sleep modes. So nobody knows if they tell you to leave the clock on for one minute a day for the 30 years and then it's okay or if you can have the clock like activated for 24 hours a day and just cut one minute away and then it keeps on going for 30 years anyway to access it again we hold the right button and we hold it cycle through the day and the date and then we end up in this menu where only two pairs of tubes are lit this will set the sleep time so basically you can set the minutes here, so we said quarter past and then we enter the hours so per quarter past midnight and then we keep it and then we end up in the second menu which looks totally like the first and we enter the wake up time. In this case the clock will shut down at a quarter past 12 at midnight and will come back up at 6 in the morning. Just wait again, 15 seconds and... We return to the main menu, leap seconds or correction seconds. As mentioned before, if the sleep mode is used correctly, the tubes could last up to 30 years, according to the menu. But what about the electronics? What do we do if for some reason the clock will lose or gain speed over time? This is what the automatic correction mode or leap seconds mode is used for. To access this menu, you will guess it. Hold the R button and we skip through the time, through the date, through the sleep time, through the wake up time and we end up here in this menu. Here you can set the type of correction. Zero will remove seconds and one will add seconds. So and we choose one because we want to add seconds because we think the clock is going to be slower. We hold it for two seconds and then we jump to the next menu. This menu represents the interval of the correction. So how often does the correction, the adding of the seconds is applied in days. And in the last one we can enter the actual seconds that in this case are added and if they are zero then are subtracted. So basically you can set it to zero and then it won't correct anything. This should be the standard settings and just for the sake of demonstrating. For now we add every seven days three seconds to the clock. And again we wait 15 seconds to return to the main menu. Ta -da! Set time and date format. So currently we are using the 24 hour format for displaying the time and the European format for displaying the date. But we can change this to American seconds if we want. Again, we just cycle through all the menus, sleep time, wake up time, leap seconds, and then we are in this menu. The settings between 12 hours and 24 hours. Set it to 12 hours. And then one represents European standard, which is day, day, month, month, year, year. And two is American standard, which is month, month, day, day, year, year, or something crazy like that. So nobody wants this. We set it to one because I'm getting confused otherwise. Wait 15 seconds and we return to the main menu. And now you see it's in the 24 hour display mode. How to
to set the alarm. This clock offers up to two individual alarms. Each alarm can be set to off, to one-time alarm or to daily alarm. So to access it, we just click the right button once and we enter the alarm settings. First, the single tube is flashing, which means the alarm settings. We can cycle through zero, which is off, on, which is one-time alarm, and two, which is daily alarm. One-time alarm, we set it to the minutes we want to have the alarm sound, 25 minutes, and in what hour, I think 15th hour was what I said before. And we just wait to jump back to the main menu. Once the alarm sounds, you can deactivate the alarm by clicking either one of the buttons. And good morning. You see it's not the prettiest sound, but it actually works and it will wake you up. See, it jumped back to zero because we set it on a one-time alarm. Funny thing, if we cycle to the second one, it is I set it to 2 a. 2 a.m. in the morning and to the every day and when I forgot to unplug the clock it was just horrible running around in the house and not finding out what really causes the pain these are the functions you can set the brightness you can activate the background LEDs you can set the time and date you have the sleep and wake up time the leap seconds for the correction intervals, I can set the time and date format and we have the two alarm modes. And additionally, in the previous video, I think I showed you that the reason why I bought this board is that I also got these 14 now Nixie tubes, but I still need a case. So I just got hold of a 3D printer, but I still don't have any pretty STLs to print. If you know any good or cool cases that can be printed with a 3D printer to fit these kinds of tubes, feel free to comment it. I would be really happy for this. So that's all of it for today. Promise. <laughs> Thanks a lot for watching.